Elixir is fast, but how can we distinguish between the performance of two pieces of code that have the same output? Benchmarking is the answer, and Benchy is a great framework for benchmarking in Elixir. In this episode, we'll use Benchy to benchmark two different pieces of code to see what's faster. Let's get started. We'll open our mix file and add Benchy as a dependency. And we'll set the only dev option since we only want this in our dev environment. Then we'll go to the command line and download our dependencies. Now we need something to benchmark. Let's write a recursive function that takes a list of numbers, adds one to it, and then returns the updated list. We'll then compare our function against enum's map function. First, we'll define a new function we'll call incrementer. It will take a list as its first parameter and we'll match against it to get the head, which will be the first number in the list, and the tail, which will be the remainder of the list. The second parameter will be our accumulator, which will contain our updated list. Since this is a recursive function, our incrementer function will then call itself. We'll pass in the tail of our list, and then build out our updated list by adding one to the head of our list, and then adding it to our accumulator. And since a recursive call is the last expression, our function is tail call optimized. Now we'll need to create another incrementer function that pattern matches against an empty list. This will happen once we've processed all the items in our list. Then we'll call enum.reverse since we want the order of the list to match what was passed in. And finally, let's add a function head that will let us set a default for the accumulator, which we'll set as an empty list. With that, let's start an IEX session and test it out. We'll create a list of one through five. Then we'll feed that into our teacher.incrementer function. And since we set a function head with a default value for the accumulator, we only need to pass in our list that we want to be processed. And perfect, our function is working just like we want it to. Now let's go back to our project and define our benchmark. We'll create a directory named benchmarks, and then in it, a file named incrementexample.exs. First, let's create a list of numbers to use with our benchmark. Let's use one through 100,000. Then we'll call benchy.run, and we'll pass in a map with the functions we want to benchmark, with the key being a readable name and the value of function with the code we want to benchmark. Let's first include our tail call optimize function, and then we'll define a function that calls our teacher.incrementer function with the list defined above. The second function we want to benchmark is enum.map. So let's give it a name, and then we'll define another function that calls enum.map, and again uses the list we defined above. We'll then give it a function that simply takes the number from the list and increments it. And with that, let's run our benchmark. We'll go to the command line and then call mix run benchmarks increment example. We can see that it tells us some info about our benchmark, like what version of Elixir and Erlang we're running. And great, it ran the benchmark, and we can see the enums map function was 1.6 times slower than our incrementer function. Pretty cool. Benchy also has a lot of great configuration options that we can use to customize our benchmarks. Let's update our benchmark to see how they work. Back in our benchmark script, we'll add the option time, which sets how long each job should be run and measured for. Let's set this to 10 seconds. Now what would an Elixir benchmarking library be without a parallel option? The parallel option allows each job to be executed in a parallel number of processes. By default, there is no parallel execution. So let's update ours to two. We'll then go back to the command line and rerun our benchmark. And we can see that our benchmark ran with the updated options, parallel set to two and a time of 10 seconds. Now that we know how to customize our benchmark, let's remove our customizations and just use the defaults for now. A bonus of using Benchy is there are a few different plugins we can use to provide nice visualizations of benchmarks we run. One of them is Benchy HTML, which will take our benchmarks and display them in graphs saved in standalone HTML files. Let's add Benchy HTML to our project. We'll open our mix file and add Benchy HTML as a dependency and set the only dev option again since we only want to include this in our development environment. Then we'll go to the command line and download it with mix depths git. Now we can go back to our benchmark script and tell it how we want to format our benchmarks. We'll add the formatters option. 
and in it we'll include the formatter we want to use, in this case the HTML formatter. Then we'll also include formatter option and tell it with HTML file where we want our results written. Let's save ours to the benchmarks directory in a file named results.html. With that, let's go back to the command line and rerun our benchmarking script. Now it prints that our results were generated, but the console results are missing. That's because they're included by default and now that we're explicitly defining our formatters, we'll have to include it as well. Let's add it. We'll go back to our benchmark script and add benchy.formatters.console to our list of formatters. Back in the command line, we'll rerun our script one last time. And great, the results were printed in the console and our benchmark files were generated. Let's open up results.html and see what it looks like. We can see some really nice visualizations here that display how fast different functions run. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and happy coding.